Hi, it's Sandy Wiley. Welcome to my mental health channel where I wipe away the stigma of mental illness by talking about my own personal struggles, having borderline personality disorder, having post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety and panic attacks. I talk about depression, narcissism, and my narcissistic mother, schizophrenia, and I wrote a book about my schizophrenic father, Life with My Schizophrenic Father, and the link to that book is down below in the description. It's available on Amazon for you to purchase. I also talk a lot about my unethical therapies and psychologists that sexually abuse me, and the links to those books, as well as my poetry, are down below in the description. I talk about a plethora of other mental health related topics, um, also motivational, inspirational. Um, I talk about that too. And, but one thing I have to um, say on every video is that I only come on as a former patient of almost 20 years. I am not a licensed therapist. I do not hold a degree in psychology, so I cannot diagnose you or even give you a professional opinion. All I ask in turn of you is your kindness, please, and respect. Please be kind to me, show respect to others in the comments. We don't need to agree on everything, but we always need to show respect and kindness. Now if you are new to my channel, welcome, welcome. Stick around, take a chance, hit that box on the lower right hand corner that says subscribe that way you will be notified each and every time I have a new video out it's a hundred percent free so if you like it give it a thumbs up share it with your friends family on other social media platforms um, let's spread the love and grow this community so we'll be there for one another please feel free to comment I love um, your comments appreciate your openness of your own struggles and I will answer your comments Now today's video. I'm going to talk about How mental illness runs in families? Um, how mental illness is often overlooked in the school system and How no one really talks about mental illness um, and how it's stigmatized this is a very important discussion um, that needs to be addressed. When I was growing up, I was an only child. Um, I had a narcissistic mother who abused me, who thought she was the best mother in the world. She was just like Joan Crawford. Um, that movie, Joan Crawford, did you see that movie? Um, when she went crazy with the wire hangers, you know, um, like, no more wire hangers she went after her daughter because you know wire hangers were like trash you had to have something silk or satin i don't know that costs like 10 bucks a hanger <laughs> um my mother was just like that um she had like these knickknacks in the house we were very poor by the way my father was um a shipper he shipped he put things in boxes and shipped them out that was his job. He was probably making very, very little money. Very, very little money. I don't know what little money is back then because it was a different era, you know. But And my mother didn't work. And, you know, she was buying these Dresden, you know, and Baccarat crystals things for like $500, $1,000, you know. You know, if we came in our house in these oriental rugs for thousands of dollars. Um, meanwhile, I didn't have any clothes on my back. All my clothes were hand-me-downs because she spent the money making her house look like a museum, you know. So on the outside, she looked like the, you know, epitome of a perfect mother uh, because she cooked dinner, homemade dinners every night. The house looked like a museum. It was immaculate. You could do the dust. You could take a glove and do the dust test and you wouldn't get one speck on your hand. My father was a paranoid schizophrenic who um, hallucinated, who was delusional, who heard voices, um, who thought the world was out to... Um, 
to get him like the radio if some, someone said something on a radio or TV he thought that was a hidden message behind it that it was a plot to destroy him and his family um, this is how I grew up he was in and out of mental hospitals all my life he left me um, with my narcissistic mother who beat, brutally beat me when I was like two years old and as a result of this I have borderline personality disorder. Of course, I have post-traumatic stress disorder because I had severe trauma in my childhood, severe. So I have that. I have severe anxiety disorder because I grew up in a house of chaos. There was no stability. There was no calming, calming influence in my life. I was the only child. And what I want to get at here is that no one else in the family cared enough to do anything about it. Not only in the family, but no one else in the school, when I went to school, that's in the city, outside in the city. Um, but who can resist these beautiful colors? See the red and the green on the trees? Um, so no one, they thought, they looked at me like, what's wrong with me, instead of trying to ask me. Nowadays, if you go to the doctors, the doctor will ask you, if you're a child or if you're an adult, it doesn't matter. They will ask you, do you feel safe at home? Well, no one ever asked me that ever because the answer would have been no, I don't feel safe at home. I got the bruises on my body to show I've been beaten. You know, I have the emotional, um, sorry, sorry. The problem was no one asked me if I felt safe, like they do now the doctors. They don't, no one else from the outside looks at what could be going on with this woman, what could be going on with this child when I was a child, right? No one else will intervene. No one else gives a shit about you, you know? But this is sad in the school system. You know, they, they thought that I was the problem. They didn't look at I was an impressionable young child coming from a traumatic experience in my household. Um, no one looked into it. They asked me, are you stupid? This is what a teacher said to me. I'll never forget it. I was in the eighth grade, okay? And a teacher took me out in the hall and I thought I was in big trouble. She goes, are you slow? This is what she said to me. I was dissociating in class. Now, if you don't know what dissociation is, it means that I was sitting in class, but I was spaced out. I was physically in the class, but I was mentally checked out. Why do you think I was dissociating? Because I was being beaten and tormented at home. My father was a schizophrenic in a mental hospital. Um, because of my upbringing. Now, no one inquired about my upbringing. No one talked to my parents to find out, you know, what was going on in my household. No one did anything. <laughs> Instead, when I was sitting there, I mean, if you were tra beaten and traumatized and you had two mentally sick parents and you're an only child and no one in the family knows any of the mess you're in and no one is there to help you or reach out to you, I mean, the only way I could, you know, get through it was to totally block it out, you know, totally to dissociate. So the, the teacher, if she had any, you know, compassion, should have been, you know, talking, looking into the background of this child, of me, instead of asking me if I'm retarded. <laughs> That's what she did. She shamed me. I was the one being abused. And you know what she did? She shamed me. Are you slow? Are you, are you stupid? Are you retarded? Who's the first president? She asked me that. Like, you know, trying to test me to see how stupid I was. You know, because I was, you know, well, I mean, come on, people. You know, common sense will tell you if, if the girl is spaced out in class, look into her background, you know, instead of shaming her, making me feel like I'm stupid, like I'm retarded. 
Um, so everyone turned their back on me. Everyone, the teachers turned their back on me. Um, of course, my girlfriends, you know, they're, they were too young and, you know, they, they didn't know. Um, later on in life, when I told one of them, a former friend, that my mother brutally beat me, she was in tears. She was crying because she was in shock. She couldn't believe um, that we're talking about the same person. She, she thought I probably made it up. Like, she never knew, you know? But this is what I want to educate people on. Um, so if you've got that friend who doesn't get out of bed or doesn't want to do anything and her house is a mess, what are you going to say? Are you going to shame her and say, you know, she's lazy? That's depression. A lot of people who are depressed, who find it very hard to, you know, just to take a shower, just to brush their teeth. And I had a deep depression in my life where, you know, I was in bed all day. You know, the mattress was on the living room floor. I had the shades pulled down. And people will look at me, and I was grossly overweight. I, I'm, I was, I'm 5'2". I, back then, I weighed 175 pounds at five foot two and they'd say oh she's lazy she don't want to do anything instead of seeing you know having empathy and saying maybe she's in a deep depression I don't know what's going on in her life but instead of that they just you know shame the person and say they're lazy shame the child and say they're stupid instead of figuring out why is that child, you know, zoning out in the middle of my class, you know? So, and no one intervenes. No one wants to be bothered. I just want to make it that the whole reason and purpose of my channel is to make people aware of mental illness, you know? It's not that your friend is lazy, you know? That's not why she doesn't clean her house, you know? Maybe she's in a depression, you know? It's not that, you know, someone is stupid, that they're not paying attention. They could have ADHD. I have ADHD too. Or they could be in a depression. Or they could be abused at home. Nowadays, they always ask that question when you go to the doctors. Do you feel safe? That's a very important question. And if, you know, a person isn't acting a certain way, Ask them, are you all right? You know, call them, check up on them. If you haven't heard from someone in a while, pick up the damn phone, will you? Pick up the damn phone. If that's a family member or one of your friends and say, hey, I'm concerned about you. Are you all right? Instead of being judgmental and saying, oh, that person is a snob. You know, you see someone aloof, off, to themselves, maybe not talking, um, maybe they're not dressed right, they look unshowered. Oh, what a pig, what a slob. Don't you ever think this? Couldn't you have a little compassion for the person? Just an ounce of compassion that maybe they're going through something, you know? It's not that they're a slob. It's not that, you know, they're too lazy to take a shower. It's not that they don't want to talk to you. Maybe there's so much pain inside and so much torment that they want to, but they can't, they just, I don't know how to describe it to someone who hasn't been through it, you know. Um, there's so much um, like walled off in their, like drowning, they're drowning in their misery, in, in their troubles that they have they're just drowning. Like if someone is drowning, right, they can't come up for ear, let alone talk, right? If you're drowning, you can't even breathe. You can't come up for ear, let alone talk to someone. So check up on people. Call them. Go to their house. Knock on the door. Inquire if they're okay. If you're a teacher and you see a child acting up in class, why do you wonder why? Why is this child acting up in class? What is going on with this child? Don't think the worst. Don't jump to the worst conclusion. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't jump to the worst conclusion and blame the child or blame your friend. 
you know, try to find out what is going on with them. Because, there's, you know, a lot of people can disguise mental illness um, with a smile and a joke. Um, a lot of people were shocked when Robin Williams took his life. Um, a lot of people, you know, they think if someone's a life of the party or got a lot, yeah, a lot of people around them, always laughing and always smiling, they don't know that that very person could be literally dying inside, you know. And then the next day you find out, you know, they took their own life. And if someone says that, don't think, oh, they only want attention. That's another thing, okay? No one, don't fool ever fool around if someone is telling you that they don't think life is worth living. Don't ever say they're looking for attention. Or, and this is common, pa parents think it too with us borderlines. A lot of times borderlines cut themselves, all right? And parents say, you know, oh, they're looking for attention. I mean, this is, this is how parents are. I just think it's just, those people aren't looking for attention, okay? Those people need help. I got to get this through to people that, and how important this is, okay? That people don't, don't assume things about people all right you don't know people's personal struggles you you never know you never will because you haven't walked in their shoes don't make assumptions because they're smiling and they crack a joke you know that they're doing okay you know or if they don't talk to you that they're being a snob or if they don't clean their house that they're lazy or if they seem in, you know, in another world, that they're stupid. We gotta bring people, um, we gotta make people aware, you know? No, borderlines aren't looking for attention, okay? They've been traumatized. That's why they're the way they are. I was severely traumatized, you know? Don't go thinking if someone says something, um, take them for serious. You know, don't think that, oh, they're just looking for attention. Please, always take it serious and always, you know, get, get them help. If you care anything about them, please um, get them help. You have to take people seriously. You can't blame, blame us, people that have mental illness, all right? Oh, we're just crying out. Um, to be heard. We're just crying out to be understood. Um, and I think this is a very important message to get across. And please let me know if, if you dealt with this yourself personally or if um, someone in your family or a friend has dealt with this and like what have you done because enough people don't do anything. Um, I never got help. Um, I never went to a psychologist in my late 30s. So I never got the help I needed. I could have possibly turned into a different person if I got help much sooner. But my mother would never bring me to the doctors, ever. She never brought me, um, even though her best friends told her that you need to get your daughter to see a psychologist. They told her that. They said, I remember hearing, hearing this now that her best friend said, you and your daughter need to see a, a professional psychologist. And my mother would have nothing to do with it. Me? I'm the best mother in the world. I don't need a psychologist. And my daughter, she's fine. So that's my message today to you guys. Um, I hope you respond in the comments. And I hope that some of it sinks in of what I said, all right? Because it's a very important message to get across. Until next time, you take care.